okay class so today our topic of discussion is analysis of cables in tension what are cables cables are often used in engineering structures for support and to transmit loads from one member to another okay when used to support suspension roofs or bridges or trolley wheels cables from the main load carrying element in the uh, structure okay so cables form the main loading uh, load carrying element in which what the suspension roofs the suspension bridges or the cable strip bridges and trolley wheels in the force analysis of such systems the weight of the cable itself may be neglected so this is a very important assumption please keep in mind that uh, in the analysis of these kind of systems the self weight of the cable is neglected however when cables are used as guys for radio antennas electrical transmission lines for example the power supply lines right and derricks the cable weight may become important and must be included in the structural analysis so it depends upon the type of structure that where you have to ignore the weight of the cable and where you have to consider the weight of the cable two cases will be considered here in which a cable is subjected to concentrated load and a distributed load okay provided these loadings are coplanar with the cable the requirements for equilibrium are formulated in an identical manner when deriving the necessary relations between the force in the cable and its slope we will make the assumption that the cable is perfectly flexible and inextensible now what does perfectly flexible and what does inextensible means so it says that due to its flexibility the cable offers no resistance to shear or bending so since we are assuming that the cable is perfectly flexible so there is no shear force and bending moment within the cable therefore the force acting in the cable is always tangent to the cable at points along its length okay so there is only tensile force which is uh, acting along the axis of the cable uh, is in the cable okay and what does inextensible means being inextensible the cable has a constant length both before and after the load is applied so since the uh, cable is inextensible so it means that the length is uh, constant before and after the application of load okay so these two assumptions are very very important as a result once the load is applied the geometry of the cable remains fixed so after the load is applied the geometry that the cable has adopted is fixed and the cable or a segment of it can be treated as a rigid body so once the load is applied to the uh, cable and the geometry is uh, it has adopted is now fixed okay and it cannot be changed until and unless the load is changed the applied load is changed okay so when the applied load is changed for example previously you had applied three point loads okay for example like this and the geometry was like this right and then you have removed these loads and you have applied the udl and due to that udl the geometry is like this so until and unless the load is there the uh, load is constant or fixed the geometry will be fixed and under that constant load a segment of the uh, cable or the complete cable can be treated as a rigid body now considering the first case where the cable is subjected to concentrated loads see this is your cable this is your support a right support a is a pin support support b is a pin support or a hinge support right so there are four reactions uh, uh, two at this support horizontal and vertical reactions right and two reactions at this support so there are four external reactions now uh, the load is applied to there are two point loads p1 and p2 right they are applied at a point c and point d and due to application of these loads this is the deformed shape of this cable a c d b okay and what is the uh, displacement or the shortest distance from a to b it is this line a b right and what is the slope of this ab with the horizontal angle uh, or horizontal line this is angle theta right and uh, after the application of load the displacement of point c c this is the original path right 
this is the original path and the C point is supposed to be here. So after the application of load point C has been displaced, displaced up to this much length or depth and what is the uh, name of that that is YC. Okay, so it has displaced up to the uh, YC much and similarly you have applied uh, point load at point D and it has displaced up to YD. <clears throat> okay, so this is your original uh, cable configuration after the application of load. Now this cable can be treated as a rigid body. Please keep in mind that the total horizontal distance between point A and point B because these are the two supports. So the horizontal distance between point A and B is L, capital L, and the length of each segment, for example, segment AC, not this length, but the horizontal component of this length is L1, the horizontal component of CD is L2, and that of DB is L3, okay? So similarly, the vertical component of this portion is YC, and vertical portion of this is YD. And if you want to know the vertical portion of this, so you can find it by my, uh, subtracting YD from YC, okay? <clears throat> now coming to the theory. When a cable of negligible weight supports several concentrated loads, the cable takes the form of several straight line segments. See, these are straight lines because it is subjected to point loads, each of which is subjected to a constant tensile force, okay? So there is a constant tensile force in each segment. Consider, for example, the cable shown here. Here specifies the angle of the cables called AB. This is a cable called AB, right? And L is the cables span from A to B. If the distance is L1, L2 and L3, for example, as I highlighted you, and the loads P1 and P2 are known. If you know L1, L2, L3 and P1 and P2, then the problem is to determine the nine unknowns. Now, what are the nine unknowns? Let me show you. See this ay this ax2 this by and this bx so there are four external reactions there is a tensile force in this segment there is a tensile force in this segment and there is a tensile force in this segment so one two three member or segment forces plus four externals seven and see the displacement of this and this point c and d so one, two displacements or uh, uh, deflections, three forces, five and four external reactions, nine. So nine unknowns consisting of tension in each segment, three segments, four components of reactions and the sags, okay, of point C and D. Now for the solutions, we can write two equilibrium equations at each point. For example, summation of F of X and F of Y at A c d and b so four points and eight equations this result in a total of eight equations right to complete the solution it will be necessary to know something about the geometry of the cable in order to obtain the necessary ninth equation now this is very difficult thing another possibility is to specify one of the sex either yc or yd instead of the cable length and by doing this the equilibrium equations are then sufficient for obtaining the unknown forces and the remaining sag, okay? So once the sag at each point of loading is obtained, these sags, YC and YD, L can be determined by trigonometry. When performing an equilibrium analysis for a problem of this type, the force in the cable can also be obtained by writing the equations of equilibrium for entire cable or any portion thereof. So please keep in mind that it depends on the requirements that whether you want to write the equilibrium equations for entire cable or a portion of it. We will solve the examples on both the cases and you will then know that okay how it will work. The following example numerically illustrates these concepts. For example, the first example is about point loads acting on the cable, right? And uh, please, please, please uh, always carefully read this statement that what does it say? It says that determine the tension in each segment so one segment two segment three segment so there are three tension forces that are required okay also what is the dimension edge and you have to determine this edge so you have nothing to do with external reactions okay now if there was a statement over here that analyze the cable system okay 
then you had to determine these reactions as well ay ax dy dx along with this and the sags of all the points but it says uh, specifically that tension in segments and this edge so it is very simple and straightforward by inspection there are four unknown external reactions which we know that ax ay dx dy and three unknown cable tensions one on each cable segment right these seven unknowns along with the sag h can be determined from eight available equilibrium equations applied to points a through d okay so you can apply uh, some equilibrium equations and you can determine the unknowns a more direct approach okay one approach it told you over here that applied summation of f of x and y here here a b c d and you can determine everything all the four reactions all the three unknowns and this h okay but alternatively a more direct approach to the solution is to recognize that the slope of the cable cd is specified and so a free body diagram of the entire cable is shown in figure b this is the free body diagram okay see the horizontal distance of ab is 2 meter bc is 2 meter and cd is 1.5 meter similarly the vertical distance from support a to d is 2 meter and from support d to point c is 2 meter okay now there is one thing clear that the segment cd see this segment cd its horizontal uh, elongation and vertical elongation both are given so see here you can draw the slope of this line that its horizontal length is for example 3 and vertical is 4 so by pythagoras theorem its slope is 5 we have just doubled it we have doubled 1.5 to 3 and we have doubled 2 to 4 so we can find easily that okay it is a triangle of 3 4 5 and its hypotenuse is 5 so we can easily determine the slope of this uh, segment cd which is 5 okay now we can obtain the tension in segment cd as follows as we know its slope it's both the propagations so we can find it for example take the moment about support a as 0 when you are taking moment about this point equals to 0 so this force is 0 and this force is 0 because their moment arm is 0 we are left with this 3 kilo newton this 8 kilo newton and vertical component of tdc and horizontal component of tdc so there should be four forces along with their perpendicular distances for example what uh, direction it has taken positive it is anti-clockwise so this uh, 3 kilo newton it is causing clockwise moment it is negative see here what is its perpendicular distance 2 meter similarly this 8 kilo newton it is also causing clockwise moment and what is its distance perpendicular distance is 2 plus 2 4 see both are negative on the other hand consider this for example tcd and its cause component see base by hypotenuse this one and it is causing the counterclockwise about this point and its perpendicular distance is 2 meter okay similarly uh, the vertical component of tcd which is 4 by 5 right sign component uh, tcd it is also causing a uh, clockwise moment uh, sorry anti-clockwise moment about this point a therefore it is positive and its perpendicular distance from this point is for example 1.5 plus 2 plus 2 so this is 5.5 meter right so solving this equation for tcd and you have obtained tension in one of the segments cd which is 6.79 kilonewton so out of three you are good with one right now we can analyze the equilibrium of points B and C or C and V in sequence. Consider point C. This is point C, okay? Now please consider that there is segment CD on its right and segment CB on its left and an external load of 8 kN is applied. So see, this is 8 kN external load. This is the force in segment CD and this is unknown force in segment BC, right? The slope of uh, CD is known to us, but, but that of uh, uh, BC is unknown. So first we have to determine theta BC and from that we have to determine the uh, force in BC, right? So 
uh, let me remove everything from here okay now consider the equilibrium summation of f of x is equal to zero so see there are two forces in x direction the cos component of 6.79 and the cos component of tbc see 6.79 and its cos component is 3 by 5 minus tbc and its cos theta bc so this is your one equation the second equation is summation of f of y so there are two forces both are acting in same direction tbc sin theta see tbc sin theta and 6.79 and its sine component 4 by 5 see it is upward right and both are positive and there is an external force that is downward which is 8 kN. this is 8 kN which is acting downward so solving these two equations with two unknowns you have obtained theta bc which is 32.3 degrees and the force tensile force in your uh, segment bc which is 4.82 so out of three segments we have obtained the results for two segments okay now we are left with the point b so draw the free body diagram for point b there is external 3 kN. the bc we know it we know the angle which is 32.3 see this 32.3 right we don't know the angle of uh, segment ba and we also don't know the force in uh, segment ba so again similarly we will solve it for uh, both of them simultaneously by using two equations summation of f of x so see this uh, the x component of 4.82 and the x component of tba so there are two forces in it similarly in summation of f of y see its y component is downward so it will be negative the th this 3 kN is also downward so it will be negative only the y component of TBA will be upward and it will be positive see it is only positive the rest of two are negative so solving this equation theta BA is 53.8 and the force TBA is 6.9 kN so uh, we have uh, solved the uh, problem uh, up to uh, for, for determining the tension in uh, all the three segments of the cable now we are only left with one thing and what was that that is this H okay so from figure A this is your figure A consider this figure A H is equal to 2 tangent 53.8 right so you have this 2 and its tangent will give you this component the height because you need you know the base and you have this angle so you will get this uh, height so h is equal to 2.74 meter and uh, this is the solution of uh, uh, what we called it as uh, uh, the concentrated loads when they are applied to the cable so uh, I will try to stop this uh, video here and uh, will continue with the uniformly distributed loads in the next video and we'll try to solve some examples in that. So see you in next video, okay?